Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today, I am talking about Stripe and their newly released platform, the Treasury API, or as Stripe calls it, Strip, Stripe Treasury. Um, so, I guess a lot of people have seen this in the news. Uh, there's been a couple of articles in major news outlets, such, such as the Wall Street Journal, and today we're going to take a look at their landing page for their new product but let's talk a little bit about what stripe treasury is and why you should be as excited as i am about this new tool so stripe treasury allows people to build products that offer things like debit cards bank accounts and pretty much any other product that a bank offers to their customers to do this Stripe had to partner with real banks. So I think some of these names were Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Barclays, etc. Uh, those are pretty large banks. Maybe you recognize a few of these names. So you're pretty much in good hands. I think that the reason why Stripe has decided to allow developers to build their own bank with or on top of the Stripe platform is that as you remember, maybe a couple of years ago, Stripe came out with the Stripe Connect uh, solution, which allows for uh, people who develop, for example, marketplaces to pay out the people who are on their marketplace the money that they're owed. And for example, if I'm on Shopify and I make $400, you know, I will probably get a percentage of that into my bank account and then I can spend it however I want. So what's Stripe Treasury? What does this Treasury API do? Well, to understand this landing page, I have to talk to you about what exactly it does and why it's so important and groundbreaking. So imagine you're a company um, that wants to somehow offer the ability of some financial services to your users. For example, you want to create a, a process that allows the users of your platform to manage their own money within your own product without ever leaving it. And that becomes kind of useful because you don't want people to jump between apps. You want to have a one kind of source of truth within your app to make every, every, your user experience much, much better. So imagine being able to do e-banking transaction directly for Airbnb. So you can pay people who come after your guests have left to clean the house directly from Airbnb. That basically makes Airbnb opens up a ton of new possibilities to create connections with like marketplaces or basically anything financially viable to, to, to Airbnb that makes also sense for its host, its customers, etc, etc. So basically it opens up a ton of possibilities. I think that for now, I, I was reading into the news that the Treasury API has been only rolled out to a couple of people and, and if you scroll down here, you'll see that it's an invite-only API. And I think Shopify has been the first company to have access to this. And uh, let's, let's try to understand how Shopify has built their, their tool. And I think they're still working on it. It's called Balance. So if we open a new tab, Shopify Balance, I think the first one is this one here. So what happens with, uh, ba with Balance? So it's 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 kind of tough because this landing page the Shopify has done doesn't really give you a lot of information so I'll try to break it down um, for for everybody to kind of get from like the the research that I've done so uh, Shopify balance was built on top of the Treasury API or at least it's being built so that people on Shopify can manage all of their money in one single place without ever going to uh, outside sources like their own e-banking, their own bank, etc, etc. So what does that mean for the people who use Shopify or any of these future companies that will implement the Treasury API is that they will have access to faster payouts, any kind of rewards that companies like Shopify, etc, etc will create for letting them manage your money and basically anything else that comes to mind to these companies because with the APIs, you can literally build any features that have basically read and write access to your money. So you could have alerts when you're 
you know bank account within shopify so this shopify balance goes below a certain threshold you can have discounts di directly baked into uh the shop your shopify store so that you could like dish out discounts to people or other vendors that, that use your product a lot and cash back and all this kind of stuff so this is super exciting for shopify and um let's see like who else could use this tool so there are companies that do operations like Lyft or Uber or any other kind of ride sharing company. They can build their own banking systems inside of their ride sharing app. So if you're a driver, you could, for example, now finally be able to pay for your car that say you've leased directly through the Uber app. And the, the advantage to that is that whatever money you make into Uber, it stays inside Uber or Lyft and then your money can automatically go out from the Uber app into whoever you're paying to, to pay for the lease of your car or the, or the loan or whatever. And that basically means that you don't have to like do all, all kind of like pulling out money from one app, putting into your bank, then ex you know creating a, a direct debit or some kind of like card monthly payment uh, for the car to be paid off. So that makes everything way more exciting for people who are in the gig economy or who just drive as their main as their main job and I think that's an extremely exciting an exciting uh, use case. You could also pay for gas right so if, you, if you're driving your car all day and you stop at a gas station instead of using you know money from your own account that's in, in in your personal account you can use your business account that's automatically embedded into uber uh driving up and pay straight out from your earnings that you make as you drive so that makes it much more exciting for people who are drivers you know less headaches less worries and i think it's great if you on the other hand say you work for a company like postmates or doordash or favor and you might for some reason be given uh, access to like credit cards with prepaid amount of money and you could use those at the local restaurants that you drive to and you pick up the food for for the customers automatically with your with these prepaid cards so the possibilities are endless and now you would ask why would you want to pay with you know these credit cards that are preloaded with money provided to you by uber eats or favor doordash well there's probably some good use case that i didn't think of and for example, you could maybe accumulate points and then as the person who delivers the food, you can use these points to, you know, as a benefit for yourself. So there, there's definitely a lot of things like that comes to mind, like rewards, etc, etc. Um, so what is the point of treasury? Like, why have they built this today? And, and I think it's a natural evolution of Stripe Connect. So like I said, Stripe Connects allowed you to pay out people that are part of your marketplace or marketplace like as uh, platform and with the treasury instead you can build all of this plus much more you can issue credit cards uh, preload them with money you can allow people to do bank transfers from within your app you can do a lot of fun stuff and I guess I think the, the thing with stripe is they usually what they do is they create these APIs so that people come up with their own use cases, right? They're like Lego blocks. Uh, they give you some blocks and then some people do those amazing creations. Like someone created a one-to-one -one, uh, scale of a Bugatti Veyron, right? Uh, in Legos. And that was kind of like amazing to see what you could do with Lego. So in the same way with the API economy, with Stripe and many other companies out there, they give you these tools. You can build anything you want. And I honestly think that on top of, of this, Stripe basically will become almost like an Atlas, right? Like not to be conf like uh, mistaken with Stripe Atlas, which is something, or Atlas, which is something else. But they will basically be able to see how people move their money. And they're probably going to use some kind of like anonym anonymized data, uh, of course, because you don't want to really sneak into people's accounts and see how they spend their money. But I think that's going to be extremely good for stripe and that might lead to another announcement in maybe a year or two who knows um they might come up with some other tool that you know further re reduces friction in payments and maybe further re reduces fraud which is always a pain in the ass 
for anyone who works in the financial industry. And at the end of the day, this is great for everybody. Uh, companies that implement the Treasury API, they basically come up with a new tool uh, that they can play with and be more flexible and build the stuff that they've always needed or always wanted to build, but they didn't have the technology to do today. Those who work for such companies, so if you work for Uber or DoorDash or any other marketplace, you now have access to money. So even website like Upwork, etc., etc., now you have instant access to money because everything is kind of like managed internally. And there's probably a lot of space for for new companies that can come up with new ways to use this and new ways to manage this. So let's now. And now that I've done this huge 10 minute intro, but I thought that would be, that was kind of important. Let's look at their landing page. And honestly, I love Stripe's landing pages. They're always very developer friendly and very clear. Although I'm not gonna lie, I was not a huge fan of this landing page, not because of the way it looks, but because it's such a hard thing to understand what they're doing with Treasury that I had to do actually a couple of hours researching and reading articles to understand exactly how they are going to roll this out and how people can use it so the on the hero you have like an h1 here as usual yeah, and people do a lot of good work at stripe making sure that the copy is always tight and makes sense there's a tiny call to action here and then there's this animated um terminal right that basically shows that yep, this is a product for developers so you immediately know who the audience is and then here it kind of starts exploring the features and kind of like how, why they build this what are the pain points that it's going to uh, allow you to to solve right so like you can create accounts because you know you want to be able to provide that functionality you want to store funds you want to move money so all these other functionalities of the api and then it gives you this is kind of almost like a social proof block as it is you know it shows like yep these are big banks that we're using to back our product we're not just stripe which is probably one of the most um well seen financial api or platform companies already but on top of that they reinforce this by adding these logos right here and then they dive into the use cases and this is kind of where it gets hard you, you need to really read this very carefully and i am kind of like bummed out that they don't have some kind of like read more uh buttons here for each of these use use cases instead what they're like is like kind of like crowdsourcing it's like hey do you have something in mind get in touch because maybe you have a better idea than what we had um and then finally they end up with a case study which is very b2b approach always good to have white paper case studies uh testimonials right like just right here and shopify like i mentioned is like their first vendor to use this they're building the the shopify balance thing and then there's a little bit more um, marketing stuff here that shows how it connects with other tools so here it's telling you you know yeah you you, you can already use stripe connect on top of that we also give you all this other cool stuff and finally the this is kind of like the real call to action it's kind of weird that they have it out here because i would have probably placed this way higher up just because you're very excited about the product i would say around here and i would have added this here you know kind of like oh you see one of these use cases working for you let's do the call to action here and instead they put it into the footer or pre-footer rather and that's that so good job stripe obviously uh you know they have a lot of resources they they've done a very good job with this page and you know everybody could do better uh, my feedback is that there's always something that you can improve especially if, if, if you ask enough people and uh, as this is a brand new landing page I, I'm not surprised if they're probably going to tweak one or two things maybe add more use cases etc etc and, and testimonials for sure so with that being said I appreciate everybody who's watched this whole video and don't forget to subscribe if you can it really means a lot to me and it really helps my channel and i'll see you in the next video